What's up guys, Tucker Jobs Gaming and this is literally this time the final tactic. Alright, I know the other one I said, but no, this one is the final tactics test. It's the final tactics test, definitely. So there is 12 teams. I explained it on one of my community posts about the top dog and underdog for the top six leagues of England, France, Germany, Portugal, Italy and Spain. Uh, so yeah, every team that is predicted first and every team that is predicted to come bottom of their league uh, gets a test. And the test is this tactic right here, which is Nap's Electric Funeral. Uh, obviously, everyone knows Nap. All right, he does fantastic tactics. Um, his tactics have basically helped catapult this channel a little bit uh, because a lot of people like him. A lot of people like his tactics. And by liking his tactics, they've liked our videos uh, and grew us. So thanks thanks to him. Thanks to the tactics. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to obviously everyone else who has uh, posted and created tactics that we have used uh, for content and for testing. Uh, so yeah, it's been great. And uh, without further ado then, let's get on with the test and stay tuned for the instructions. Right then, guys, welcome back. And this is the final test. It is the final test, I promise you, of FM20 because FM21 is just around the corner. It is literally in about, what, 10, 12 days? 12 days now, something like that. Comes out, I think, hopefully, on the 10th of November. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with this tactic. It's a nap tactic. It's called the Electric Funeral. It's the 20.4.4 patch. So it is a fairly new one. It is a very new one on the SI community forums so you may have tried it you may have not but hopefully it will do pretty great so let's go through the instructions then uh, player instructions uh, advanced forward inside forward left inside forward right advanced playmaker the Mozilla defensive midfielder wing back left and it's marked specific position which is which is there we go uh, the mark specific position is the attacking midfielder right wing back right again mark specific position which will be the left uh, ball playing defender left ball playing defender right and the sweeper keeper set piece instructions corners defending right and defending left and attacking left and attacking right free kick instructions defending right and left and attacking left and right and finally, throwing instructions, defending right and left, and attacking left and right. For those of you that do download the tactics, all right, and you always wonder why I do this, if you haven't seen previous videos, I do it. So FM Touch players and people that can't download tactics or don't know how to download tactics can actually still use them. They just have to manually input all the instructions that I'm given. That's, that's why I do it. So uh, yeah, anyway, it is an attacking mentality tactic in possession. We are looking at attacking width fairly wide, passing in space, overlapping left and right with the play out defense instructions. Passing directness is short, uh, slightly shorter with a tempo of extremely high. Working ball into box, which is always a good one. I uh, don't like wasting shots and it's always nice having the 35 yard screamer, but it's always nice as well or just as nice to uh, work your ball into the box, basically pass it around and get that uh, almost certain goal, hopefully. Uh, and also run at defence instruction. In transition, counter press and counter. And your goalkeeper's instructions are to distribute the ball to the to the full backs and to throw it long. Uh, out of possession, defensive shape is using offside trap, a much higher line of engagement with a higher defensive line. Defensive width is narrow, extremely urgent press and intensity with a prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And the get stuck in instruction is on. So this is the Man City team. I've said it is the top team predicted first and the bottom team predicted to get relegated and last in that league. Uh, we're testing it on the top six. So we have Man City and Norwich for the Premier League. All right. In, in uh, France, we've got PSG and FC Metz. Germany, Bayern Munich and Paderborn. In Italy, we have uh, Juventus or Zebri, obviously, who haven't uh, got the, the uh, added little pack there. And also uh, Lecce as well. Um, in Portugal, we've got FCP and Vicente. And in Spain, Barcelona and Mallorca. Hopefully, it will do well not for the big teams, all right, but also 
for the small teams, all right? The whole plan is to not get relegated with them. And if we don't get relegated with them, if I don't get sacked in any of these 12 teams, all right? Because when I do my tests, obviously go to the end of the season, there's a lot of teams there. I can't do a middle section. And I have a look and it says nothing. It just says my name there, all right? No team. I got sacked. It means the test did not go well. <laughs> so hopefully all teams are still there. I'm still there. I'm still managing. And uh, we get a little good showing for the video. So, right then, first of all, best selected 11 for the Man City squad. Norwich, PSG, FC Mets, Bayern Munich, Paderborn, Juventus, Lecce, FCP, Vicente, Barcelona, and finally, Mallorca. 12 teams. 12 teams. I've never done 12 teams on any of my tests. That is why this one is a special one. It is the last one. It is the biggest one. And it is, in my opinion, to do a test on the best team in the league so you can get a little showcase of how it can actually do for that team in that league and showcase the numbers, the amount of goals you can get. It's fantastic. Also, everyone likes using the underdog when they start a new save. So showing them as well is just as good. Can they survive? Can they compete? Can they get European football qualification? All right, sad. So let's go to the end of the season and have a look at all of the results. Right then, end of the season now. And we are starting, obviously, in the Premier League. You can already see the results of Man City. They came first. They are the champions. And it, it, it is expected, all right? It is always hard to defeat Liverpool. But it's always expected... Uh, when you've got a plug-in tactic to do absolutely amazing with a team like Man City, definitely. Uh, Norwich did very well. Tenth finish is nothing to moan about. Uh, I know I've done tactics before where they've finished higher, but it's still fantastic that they can finish tenth. But let me just have a look. Did I get sacked from any club? All right, you can see in this top right corner. No. No. Get in. All right, still managing all clubs, which means they've hopefully done enough to be happy with, with what's happened. So hopefully it's some good uh, good results. So let's start off in the Premier League anyway. So Man City came first. Norwich was 10th. Man City got 100 points with a 90 goal difference. The players from both teams, uh, most of them, if not all of them, no, it is all of them, are all from Man City. All right? So Norwich players didn't get into the top threes of any stats, but the Man City players that did, we've got Aguero came first on goals with 37 37. Second place was Firmino with 21. All right, 16 more league goals. Insane. Average rating De Bruyne and Aguero 7.91, 7.69. First and second. Assists Silva and De Bruyne. 26 assists for Silva. 26 assists in in the league. That's just the league. That's not even counting the cup competitions or Europe or anything like that. All right, and 18 for De Bruyne, which is awesome. And joint uh, second on player of the matches was De Bruyne with eight. Uh, Edison also came second with clean sheets with 21 clean sheets. Absolutely insane. That's fantastic. So first, let's get on with the competitions for Man City. How did they do? European Champions Cup quarterfinals got knock knocked out by Bayern Munich. So we know already the other team that I manage in Germany, Bayern Munich, has done pretty well. Uh, English FA Cup fifth round got knocked out by Brentford. Oh dear. Giant Slayers. Uh, Brentford obviously did amazing. Fifth round, it was. The score, 4-3. They scored in the extra time. Oh, my. Oh, Man City. Oh, dear. Uh, Carabao Cup, we won that. And in the final, it was against Everton. 6-2. Domination. Uh, and also the Community Shield, that was won as well. 2-1 against Liverpool. So, good result there. Uh, let's have a look at the squad then. So, best player. Uh, in all competitions, was Aguero with a 7.87, 53 apps, 67 goals, 67 goals. That is Messi standards, all right? For those of you that have watched the channel and seen some of the tactics where I feature Barcelona and Messi scoring daft amount of goals, all right? that is the same caliber, 67. That is absolutely insane. Uh, five assists with 18 chances created with 15 player of the matches. After him was De Bruyne, 16 goals, 23 assists. Bernardo Silva on the right-hand side, 17 goals. Awesome. Even better, 35 assists in all competitions. All right, this guy is a magician. He was setting, obviously, Aguero up 
Left, right, and centre. So well done to him. Then we've got David Silva, 14 and 5. John Stone, centre back, 10 goals. Awesome for him. Raheem Sterling, uh, not as good as Silva. All right. But he's still got 17 and 15. And uh, everyone else did pretty good as well. Mendy on that win back left position, uh, 14 assists. Awesome for that. So tactic analysis then. Let us have a look. Goals in the last 50 matches. Because as we know, we base it on 50 matches, not the whole season. Because we have obviously scored and conceded more. So we only base on 50. Okay. 152 goals. Big number. Big, big number indeed. And only 44 conceded. Considering all the competitions that you're actually in with Man City, 44 conceded is very well done. Uh, goal types, 95 play shots. Powerful shots, 19. One kill shots, 23 headers. Three kicks, three. And 11 penalties. My God, did we uh, get them to foul us in the box, basically. And you, you know for a fact it was Silva, um, Sterling and Aguero that was doing all the damage when it came to uh, attacking the box. Uh, and it was obviously them that was winning the penalties. Uh, goal assists then in the last 50. Uh, 20, 38. That is one of the highest. This is looking like a very, very good uh, tactic for set piece. Set pieces, set piece goals, all right, headers, corners, look, 28 goals came from corners, 10 from free kicks, 38, that's insane, that's one of the highest out of all the tests I've done, I think. Uh, short passing, 12, crossing, 21, throw-ins, 1, opposition mistakes, 13, through balls, 30, great numbers for Man City here. Uh, there's the goal locations, there's the assist locations, look at so many high numbers, this tactic was absolutely fantastic for Man City, uh, brilliant. So, yeah, well happy with that. Next team, Norwich. They finished 10th. They did well. They survived relegation. Norwich is a great team to test with when you're trying to establish how good a tactic can be. And if they survive and come 10th, 11th, 12th, it's done fairly, fairly well. Very well. But there is tactics out there where, where it has allowed um, Norwich to gain European qualification for next season. Um, not necessarily that one was better, all right? We, I only do the one test, the one run-through. It could have been a, a slightly bad test, a slightly unlucky test for Norwich. couple of results, all right? They only needed seven points, and they would have been contending for seventh place. The European, obviously, football next season. They would have took Leicester's spot. So anything could have changed just with a few little games, just a little bit more luck. Um, so obviously, there's no players in the top three. So we'll go straight to the competitions with Norwich, English FA Cup, third round got knocked out by Arsenal. Understandable, Arsenal is by far the stronger team. Carabao Cup knocked out in the quarterfinals by Forest Green Rovers. Forest Green Rovers got all the way to the quarter final. No way. How did they do in the semi-final? Ah, they went out <laughs> to Man City. 9-0 <laughs> over, uh, over both games. Insane. Forest Green did absolutely amazing. Great, great stuff there. Um, squad then, let's have a look. Uh, your best player was Buendia. All right, 11 goals, 8 assists. And these numbers do not compare to Man City, do they? All right, they may have done all right in the league, but the numbers aren't great. I've definitely had tactics that have done a lot better than this. All right, Duda, 9 and 6. You've got Zimmerman, 3 goals. Uh, the striker, all right, Puki only got 10 only got 10 uh, so that's a shame so yeah the numbers aren't great but the position was pretty strong all right tactic analysis then Let's have a look in the last 50 games only scored 77 ah right then so in this league this tactic obviously worked better with the more elite clubs the better clubs um, i'm not sure how it would do with a mid-table team like southampton or an everton something like that so check it out guys download it let us know in the comments and uh, it's always fun to see other people's reactions and scores and the results and everything like that uh, i've got a few comments before where someone loves testing tactics and they love the channel and they're always trying them out and letting me know so you could do that too all right uh, so yeah 77 is not high at all uh, but for an underdog team they survived all right it, it'll do 68 as well is slightly higher but again they are the underdog they are predicted bottom all right so 68 is forgivable definitely uh, goal types then 42 play shots powerful shots 11 one killed shot 16 headers again 16 headers are pretty good uh three kicks four and three penalties goal assists in the last 50 matches 20 still pretty high uh came from set pieces 
and the rest of them were all from open play goal locations and assist locations so next up we are in france let's start with psg and let us have a look well as you can see psg were champions we knew they were going to be champions they lost one game all season 105 points and 105 goal difference that's a lot of goals being scored there fc mets though they did equally good fifth place qualified for european football next season they are predicted to come bottom and they finished fifth that is outstanding outstanding stuff by fc mets so let's have a look at the players in the top threes then we've got a couple of players obviously from fc mets well one player from fc mets and most of them from uh, psg so goals mbappe 38 league goals 38 uh, then we've got Diallo from FC Mets, came second with 21. And then after him, third place, Neymar. Average rating, Mbappe, Neymar, Demaria. Okay, 7.81, 7.74, and 7.6. Some good ratings there. Assists, we've got Neymar, 26 assists, and Demaria with 14, which is fantastic. That's what you want from your inside forwards. You want them to be the most dominant creators in your team, and I'm well happy with that. Mbappe came joint second with player of the matches with seven. And uh, Navas clean sheets, number one, and he is the number one. Uh, 25 clean sheets, 25 games in the league, all right? So that means there was only 10, that means there was only 13 games that you played where they scored against you, all right? 25 clean sheets, awesome. So let's have a look at the competitions for PSG then. Champions Cup, knocked out in the first knockout round by Bayern Leverkusen, which is a shame. I thought uh, I thought uh, PSG would get pretty far. French Cup semi final got knocked out there. Coupe de la Ligue they won that against Brest. Brest did pretty well to get that far. Two uh, one, nice. Uh, winner of the Trophies des Champions as well against Rennes. Three one there. So awesome. All right. So they got the treble. Okay. Three cups. It's a shame they didn't get a little bit further in the Champions Cup, but can't moan. All right. Anything can happen in the Champions Cup. Everyone knows that, all right? With many, many of us have played games where you're thinking, yeah, I should win that. I'm heavy favourites to win that. But you don't win that, do you? You don't win it. And it kills us inside, just that little bit. Uh, so let's have a look at the squad then. Best player in all competitions was Mbappe. 53 goals with 10 assists, 22 chances created. After him, though, was my guy of the season. This is the choice I would have had. All right, I don't know how this guy didn't get a bigger average rating in all competitions. But 31 goals and 30 assists. Neymar is unplayable. He is such a great left-sided player. And then after him, we've got obviously Guy, 6-4. and four. Marquinhos, all right, for a centre-back, 15 goals, 3 uh, Herrera 13 14 Verratti 14 and 8 Demaria 16 and 23 we're looking at Man City all over again this is a very powerful elite tactic all right some big numbers all around you got Munia with 18 assists as well as that right back position awesome great tactic analysis sent in the last 50 games 145 another big number uh, you, you, yeah you can't say anything to that number that is awesome. All right, and 21 conceded. That's in every competition. 21 conceded in every competition. Just in the league itself, you conceded 10. 10 goals. And that's in the last 50. Obviously, you've conceded more. Okay? But 10. That's... <laughs> it's insane. Uh, good job, PSG, basically. Uh, goal types and 82 play shots powerful shots 24 headers 26 headers again high number three kicks one and 12 penalties goal assists in the last 50 games 20 30 42 from set pieces of free kicks and corners 42 i thought man city's was high 11 short passing crossing 23 through balls 24 big numbers coming this is a great tactic this is the electric funeral by nap you should definitely just from seeing these couple of teams it's looking great okay goal locations and assist locations and then let's have a look at fc mets they did absolutely incredible to get fifth position for an underdog team predicted to come 20th all right their squad is nowhere near the caliber of these top teams and they did very well we already established diallo came second and that was the only player in the top three so let's have a look at the competitions then they won the french cup the underdog of league one won the french cup 
in the final against Rennes, 3 0. Well done, FC Mets. Uh, Coupe de la Ligue, obviously, we already know they got knocked out by PSG because we've seen that result earlier. So, yeah, if I was managing FC Mets and this happened in the first season, yeah, hats off, hats off to them. All right, you can't moan at that whatsoever. Uh, let's have a look at the squad. So, your best player was. Uh, Doran, okay, six and four. All right, so not high numbers, but he was a defensive midfielder. He probably bossed it. All right, he was probably the big lad in the middle of the park that protect, protected and started every single attacking move. So hopefully, I'm right with that. And uh, he did very, very well indeed. Uh, Diallo was obviously after him with 28 goals in all competitions with three assists. Awesome. Triore, uh, Triore uh, ten and ten is the midfielder at centre. Uh, then you got, is it Cohade? Cohade? I think it's Cohade. Uh, 6 and 14 is the other midfielder. And Bron, boy, 5, 1. All right, so another high number here. We've got, uh, right, everyone, everyone who's seen my video, you know I butcher these names. All right, I try. All right, I'm going to say get. Is it get? Opa get. Opa get it right. <laughs> Crap jokes. Uh, 5 and 10, 10 assists, great there. Uh, and Delane as well with 10 assists, so awesome for them. Tactic analysis then. FC Mets for the underdogs in the last 50 games, 103. That's great, you can't moan at that. I'm not moaning at that. Nope, good. I'm good with 103. 58 conceded as well, acceptable. Right, I'm happy with that. Uh, goal types uh, in the last 50 matches. 67 play shots, powerful shots, 8. One curled shot, 22 headers. All right, this is looking very good for headers. Uh, three kicks, one and four penalties. Goal assists in the last 50 matches. We've got 20 coming from set pieces. The rest of them were all from open play. 29 through balls. Uh, goal locations and assist locations. Awesome for FC Mets. Right then, next up, Bundesliga. We are in Germany. Let's start off how we are doing. Bayern Munich came first. Shocker. Absolute shocker. All right, they're expected to come first, so I'm happy at that. But they weren't convincingly first, all right? They only finished two points above second place RB Leipzig. Okay, 50 goal difference, so it's a bit lower than the other top elite teams that we've seen with PSG and Man City. Paderborn, though, another bottom team relegation favourite. Sixth, qualified for Europe again. Awesome for both teams. So let's have a look at the top three players. And it looks like there's only two. And they're both from Bayern Munich. We've got Lewandowski on goals and Thomas Muller as well. So Lewandowski came first with 35 goals, came first on average rate with 7.82. Uh, uh, Muller joined first on the assist with 12. And Lewandowski again came first with player of the matches with 9. So awesome for them, definitely. Uh, Bayern Munich, let's have a look at the competition. So European Champions Cup, they were the winners. So at least out of all of these teams... I've got a lot of them, all right? There's 12, six of them are top elite teams. I'm happy one of them got the Champions Cup because it would have been annoying if I did this whole test and Liverpool won. I'm like, oh, I'm not even managing Liverpool. They're not even using the tactic. Ugh, ugh. But no, sand, all right? Bayern Munich won it. They won 3-1 and they beat Liverpool in the final. So, nice score. Runner-up in the Pokal Court, which is a shame, went out to Borussia Dortmund, lost 3-2. And there were also the winners of the German Super Cup in the final, again against Borussia Dortmund, and won 3-1. So, again, we have a treble, okay? So, well done to Bayern Munich. Uh, let's have a look at the squad. Best player was Lewandowski with 54 goals, big numbers. Assists is four. After him, we're not going to count him. He only had two games. So, we've got Tolisso, 9-15 and 15 as a midfielder. Uh, Jerome Boateng, 6-2 centre-back. Thiago, 9-10. Uh, Thomas Muller did fantastic with 11 goals, 17 assists, and some good numbers hit Philip Coutinho as the attacking left, 18 and 12. So, weirdly, to get 18 goals, 12 assists, that's good numbers, all right? Only got a 6.99. Yes, his passing was a little bit low with 79%, but it's not the lowest, all right? Decent tackling, 2.89. So, I don't get why it's 6.99. Surely he should have been in the average rating above 7. He should have been a green. Definitely been a green. Uh, tactic analysis then. Best, um, sorry, top numbers uh, in the last 50 matches. Okay, goals, 118. Not as uh, big as the other elite teams. So, hmm, FC Bayern is obviously showing still good numbers. Don't get me wrong. Lewandowski with 50-odd goals. Awesome. But... 
118 is a lot lower than the other top teams. So maybe it's, is it a Bayern thing? Is it the fact is, is Germany a, a harder league? I wouldn't think so. Not compared to the Premier League. Uh, so 118 is a good number, but it's not as much as the others. But 49 conceded is, uh, is pretty good. It's not the best. It's still higher than the others, uh, but it's not bad. A goal types then. 75 play shots, powerful shots, 14 killed shots, none. 18 headers, again, but it's Lewandowski, come on. Got to be good at heading. Uh, free kicks, 3 and 8 penalties. Assists in the last 50 games, uh, 21. Came from set pieces, rest from open play, through balls and crossing. High numbers again. Goal locations and assist locations. So next up is the underdog, was Paderborn, okay. They did finish fairly strong with 6th position which is very fantastic for a team of their calibre who are predicted to come 18th. And uh, yeah, awesome. They didn't get any players, obviously, in the top three ratings apart from yellow cards, but we never count yellow cards, do we? All right, they're bad numbers. We don't want them. But you have the got stuck in instruction on, so that's completely expected that that's going to happen. Uh, so let's have a look at the competitions. DFB Pokal Cup, second round, knocked out by Dortmund. All right, Dortmund are 10 times the team that Paderborn is. Uh, so it's expected, uh, but they only actually finished four places, three places above us. So not that massive. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at his squad. Best player was uh, not going to not going to count him. He only played one game, but he played an eight point eight. Um, was is are we saying Kapic? I'm going to say Kapic. All right, nine goals, eight assists, thirty five apps. All right, your midfielder. Then you got Mamba, eighteen and five. He was a striker. Uh, bigger uh, another big numbers is. All right, another one here. Sebastian Vasiliadis. Vas Vasiliadis, I'm going to say that. Eight and three, did pretty well. All right, so definitely not high numbers. It's not going to be high numbers, all right? Tactics on elite teams will always show decent numbers. The numbers we've seen, fantastic, all right? But these aren't too bad, all right? You, you, you do expect more for the position that you finished in. But in a way, you are surviving... Um, with the draws, all right. This tactic is probably allowing Padawan to pick up points where they wouldn't normally pick up points. Just the one point here and there will make a massive difference for them, and it has. All right, the finish sixth. What a finish! Uh, tactic analysis for these then in the last fifty games, uh, eighty-eight. So not high, all right. And sixty-one conceded. What are you gonna expect again? It's just allowed them to play just well enough to get European football. Uh, goal types, 52 play shots, powerful shots, 11, kill shots, 2, headers, 16 headers, again, pretty high, uh, free kicks, 2, and 5 penalties, goal assists, in the last 50, or 44, only goes to 44, okay, in the last 44 matches, uh, 26 from set pieces, again, set pieces is high, all right, I know that lucky, lucky Mediva, if you're watching, use this one, mate, you know you like your set piece tactics, this one's looking like it's the... Uh, so it looks like it looks like a good one, uh, and the rest of them were obviously all from open play. There's goal locations and assist locations. Right then, let's go to Italy and Juventus and Lech A. Okay, so Juventus came first. We were always expecting that. We just want to see how good they were going to be. Okay, ninety-eight points, ninety-one goal difference. They went unbeaten. Unbeaten in the league, they didn't lose one single league game. Yes. Uh, eight draws and 30 wins in Lecce. Okay. 19 with um, six draws, 13 losses. So they did fantastic. Unfortunately, they didn't qualify for Europe like the other underdogs did previously. But ninth finish is still pretty good. All right. So the players that belong in the top threes come from both teams. Okay. So goals. Ronaldo and Dybala. 31 goals for Ronaldo. On the, and Eden team of players a striker. All right, and Dybala was the striker. Uh, got 20 first and second. All right, all three Juventus players got the average ratings with uh, Benucci, uh, Janic or Pajanic, and Ronaldo. Okay, first, second, third, 7.7, 7.6, and 7.4. And then assists belongs to a Lecce player. Okay, 17. He came first, Falco. And then again, Pajanic. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I feel myself saying it. I can hear myself say it, and I think that's wrong. Let me know in the comments. It's wrong, isn't it? You're going to all slate me. You're going to slate me. But expect it. Expect it for this 
for this uh, video expect it for fm21 because i'm dreadful with names i'm dreadful with pronunciations all right i do research them i do look i do listen to them that's how you say it as soon as the video comes on back to square one <laughs> uh play of the matches Falco and Ronaldo, first and second. Ronaldo got 10, player of the matches. Falco got 8. And Chesney for clean sheets, 24. Awesome, came first, 24. Nice. Uh, so let's have a look at Juventus' competitions then. So European Champions Cup, we know now that every other team after this ain't going to win, all right, because Bayern won the Champions Cup. And they got knocked out by Bayern. So it just says it all, doesn't it? And the score was 4-2 over both legs. Um, runners up in the Italian Cup, so that's a shame, went out to Lazio, alright, 1-0, and the Italian Super Cup again went out in the final against Lazio, Lazio did them twice in both finals of the Cup, so that's a shame, but unbeaten in the league, unbeaten in the league, nice, uh, let's have a look at your squad then, so best players it was Ronaldo with 41 goals, 10 assists, 23 chances created. For that left-hand side player, 41 goals is mighty impressive. Uh, then you've got Benucci, 12-1. Uh, and 1. Janic, 12-25. Uh, Dybala, 31 goals as your striker, 8. Uh, Aaron Ramsey, all right? the, the, the guy that went on a free but got a big pay packet. Uh, 16 goals and 11 assists. Uh, everyone else did fantastic. Douglas Costa on the right-hand side, 13-12. and 12, So well done that team uh, tactic analysis in the last 50 games let's have a look 134 big numbers big numbers i'm loving it uh, total conceded was 32 uh, goal types then 81 play shots powerful shots 17 curled shots one headers 21 headers again high uh, free kicks five and nine penalties assists in the last 50 you're looking at 25 came from set pieces the rest of them were all from open play goal locations and assist locations so now let's have a look at Lecce okay they came ninth that's not a bad position we've already seen that earlier uh, they've got obviously one player with Falco in the player of the matches and assists so well done to him uh, so let's have a look at the competitions then Italian Cup knocked out in the first round by Torino yeah okay so they didn't do great in the uh, cup competitions but they did fantastic in the Italian Serie A Okay, ninth place is pretty good for a team of that caliber. Uh, squad, your best player was Barak. Okay, 14 goals, to assists. After him, you got Falco, 11 and 18. Falco says that he was the best performer in the league, but overall in all competitions, it was Barak. But Barak only played 26 matches, whereas Falco played 38. Um, so yeah, everyone played fantastic. Farias, 12 and 8. Uh, some good numbers here from Mancozu, 10 uh, goals. We're not going to count him because obviously he's on loan, but he did pretty well. 12 goals, Mantia. Uh, so, yeah, did pretty well. All right, they're, they're a small team. What are you going to expect? Not every tactic is going to be a miracle worker, but it can happen. I have had tactics where underdogs have won the league. All right, check out the channel. You will see them for yourself. Uh, so let's have a look at the tactic analysis then. Goals in the last 45 matches for Lecce. 100, that's actually good. 100 in the last 45 matches so i'm happy with that definitely 63 conceded expected they're underdogs pretty high still would have been nice to maybe get a little bit lower but again i don't think there's anything wrong with that uh goal types 53 play shots powerful shots 15 one girl shots 22 headers i'm cementing this as a set piece tactic definitely gotta be or a crossing tactic at least uh, three kicks at nine and zero penalties. Assists in the last 45 matches. 26 came from set pieces. The rest of them all from open play. And goal locations and assist locations. So next up, let's go to Portugal with FCP and Vicente. Okay, so FCP, finally, we have a team that was predicted first but didn't end up being first. They came second, lost out to SLB. Obviously, SLB is the second uh, big team of that league. Uh, they got 80 points and we got 76, all right? So it was only a couple of wins away from winning the league, uh, which is a shame. And we haven't got that many players in the top threes, apart from two. And one's your goalkeeper for FCP, and the other one's a Vicente player. And Vicente were predicted to come, obviously, last, like the tactic says, or uh, well, like the tactic video suggests, obviously, top dog underdog. Um, European qualification came fifth. Awesome. Great stuff. Everything's going right so far for this tactic, I think. But 
for FCP. They didn't win the league. Uh, but Vieira got 16 goals, joint second. And uh, how do you say that one then? Marchesen for clean sheets for FCP. Uh, goalkeeper, 16. Uh, let's have a look at the competitions for FCP then. So Portuguese Cup, they did end up winning it. 1-0 uh, in the final. Portuguese League Cup, though, got knocked out in the semi-final by Sporting. And the European Champions Cup, we know that they weren't going to win it. Uh, got knocked out in the first knockout round by RB Leipzig. So, yeah, it's a shame that they didn't win the league, but they at least won a Portuguese Cup. They got a competition under the belt. So they've got one thing. Right? So that's happy to, something to be happy about. If you are putting a plug-in play tactic in and FTP end up coming second when they are clearly the strong team predicted first by the media and everything, and you come second, yeah, you'll be a little bit gutted. It's a shame. All right, so let's have a look at your squad then. Your best player was uh, uh, Ferri Fer Ferreira, all right, but you only played seven games, so let's go down. Tell us, eight and 12. Uh, Sergio Oliveira, 17 and nine. Uh, Pereira, five and five. So yeah, some good numbers, all right? Compared to the other elite teams, it is pretty low, to be fair. All right, so it's not a shame, but it is a shame, all right? Portuguese League is one of, obviously, the weaker leagues of the top six so um it's to, to be expected that their elite teams isn't as elite as the others so in in reality the numbers probably reflect pretty accurately uh, so let's go to the tactic analysis then goals in the last 50 games 101 all right so 101 is still pretty good for a top team though it's not pretty good, all right? You're always expecting to be 110, 120s in the last 50 matches. 46 conceded, though, is pretty low, pretty good. Uh, goal types, 45 play shots, powerful shots, 23. Headers, 21. Four free kicks and eight penalties. Assists, 30. In the last 50 games, came from set pieces. The rest went all from open play. Goal locations and assist locations. Next up, Vicente, all right? These are the underdog team in the Portuguese Premier League. And they came fifth, which is absolutely incredible. This tactic, again, is Naps Electric Funeral. Um, is doing very well for both teams alike, for the underdogs and the top teams. So please download it. Let us know how your results get on, all right? Because this is all holiday testing, okay? Things can vary so differently when human, uh, human players are going at it. I do watch a few games, don't get me wrong, but it's not enough to warrant to say that I played a full season. I don't. I've got a lot of teams to get through. Uh, so let us know. How, do the results actually get better by a human player for those little tweaks and, and, and shouts during the game? Uh, so download it. Have a go. Maybe a mid-table team. See how they actually do. Will they actually compete for first and second? If the underdogs are doing this well, surely mid-table teams should be doing better. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Vicente came fifth, great position, and they got the player joint uh, came joint second on goal. So well done to him. Competitions for these guys then. So fifth round got knocked out of the Portuguese Cup and the League Cup. Knocked out in the third phase. All right. Third phase didn't get far, did they? <laughs> Squad best player was Ribeiro. Eleven goals, six assists as a midfielder. Not bad. All right. So Hugo Vieira got twenty and one assist. Any other big numbers? Uh, nine and five for Crave. Is it Crave? Uh, and then Beret as well. Uh, eight and five. So they're the only other all right numbers going on. But they're the underdogs. You're not expecting high numbers. But you're expecting that. No, you're not expecting it. But you've got a high finish. So it don't matter what those numbers say. It don't matter. Okay. You finished fifth. You got European football. Your reputation is going to go through the roof. Which is going to allow you to get better players, uh, better, hopefully better facilities and more money, and build from there. Build from there. Tactic analysis in the lap shots, goals in the last forty-eight matches, one hundred and eleven. It just shows the quality of the Portuguese league when the underdog team. Yes, it can determine on certain players. Obviously, tactics work a lot better when you've got players that play very well in that tactical shape or position or role. Um, but as a general gist, when the underdog predicted last in the league is scoring more goals all right, than the best team in the league over the course of a season, something's not going right, is it? Something is not going right. So, yeah, awesome, 111. Can't moan. 
Okay, total conceded 67. Goal types, 57. Play shots, powerful shots, 15. Headers, 25. Free kicks, 5. And penalties, 9. Uh, goal assists in the last 48 matches, 21. Came from set pieces. And the rest of them were all from open play. Goal locations and assist locations. And finally, the last league of this test. We are in Spain. Okay, so let's have a look. Barcelona came first, which is what you like to see. Uh, but this time, Messi didn't come first with everything like he normally does on every tactic test. He normally gets goals, rating, assists, and player of the matches, but he, he didn't. So that's going to be interesting to look at. And Mallorca is the only team that's actually shown uh, weakness with this tactic, all right? So they still survive relegation, which is a big plus, but they came 16th, all right? So nowhere near the other underdogs on the other tests. So that's unfortunate for Mallorca. Is it something to do with the test itself? Were they a bit unlucky? Was it a bad test? Or is it the fact that the tactic didn't work for Mallorca? It doesn't work for underdogs in the Spanish first division. So let's, anyway, something worked right. Because I've just seen Hernandez for Mallorca is actually joint first with Luis Suarez on goals. So in a way, it still works for the underdog. All right, they did fantastic goal-wise. Um, solo goal-wise, that is, anyway. Uh, but let's have a look at the other players. So Suarez as well, by Barcelona, joint first place goals. Uh, Suarez and Messi, average rating, first and second, 7.54 and 7.52. Assists, Jordi Alba and Rakitic, all right, 13 and 12, first and second. Suarez came joint first with player of the matches. And Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, uh, clean sheets with 23. Uh, let's have a look at the competitions for Barcelona. European Champions Cup semi-final, knocked out by Liverpool. Spanish Cup. Semi-final knocked out by Real Madrid. What was the score there? Real Madrid beat us 5-2 over both games. Uh, Spanish Super Cup, though, winners. Beat Real Madrid 2-1. So, yeah, two competitions, got the double. Would have been nice to probably win the Spanish Cup, get the treble. Uh, it's expected that they can win the Cups easily. Obviously, Real Madrid being, and maybe Atletico Madrid, being the only two teams that are dangerous to Barcelona in reality. Obviously, they're not doing too great at the minute, I don't think, uh, compared to how they've actually done in real life. But, uh, yeah, they've still got two, so you can be happy about that. Uh, let's have a look at the squad. Best player was Messi. All right, may not be in the best player uh, in the league, but over every competition, it was Messi. 17 goals, 21 assists, only played 42. And I did look, all right, and he was actually injured for a few months. So, yeah, he could have probably propelled them maybe to a Champions League final, maybe to a Champions League win. Uh, it's a shame that he was injured, but I do not put immune from injury on these tests. All right? These are pretty much trying to get him close to realistic. So if players get injured, they get injured, like they're doing a real season, like they're doing your save games. Okay, so Luis Suarez came second, 7.54 in all competitions with 37 goals. Rakitic, 15 and 22. Even PK, 15 goals. All right, uh, De Jong, 14 and 6. Some high numbers. Griezmann, 13 and 12. Alba, 2 and 13. Uh, Philip Coutinho, obviously, is at uh, Bayern Munich and did very well. So we're not going to count that because he's purple. And purple means loan. <laughs> so anyway, they did pretty good. They won the league, got a cup. So I'm happy. Right, not massive numbers like the other top teams like PSG or Man City, um, but maybe if Messi was played as a striker and not as the attacking right, all right, because I only did the best in position, like on you know, when you go here, quick select, pick with that position, best 11. That's how I just roughly get the teams. Um, so maybe if he was a striker, it would have been absolutely fantastic. Maybe crept up to the 60, 70 goals, like in some tests, like he has done. Right, so it's perfectly possible. Switch him around, all right? Some people don't like Suarez. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, tactic analysis for Barcelona. Goals in the last 50 matches, 129. So he's still scoring a lot. 129 is a high number. Uh, 37 conceded as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Very, very low indeed. Uh, goal type, 75 play shots, powerful shots, 18, one curled shot, 23 headers. 23 headers, and you, you, your front three players aren't the biggest, really. Suarez, not that tall. Griezmann, not that tall. Messi, definitely not that tall. Um, so, 
yeah, they're obviously coming from the midfields or they're coming from set pieces and defenders and stuff like that. Uh, three free kicks and nine penalties. Goal assists in the last 50 games. 10, 20, 32. Came from set pieces. 32 set pieces again. Lucky. Come on, mate. Get this tactic down. Um, and the rest of them are all from open play. Goal locations and assist locations. And next up, and last team to do. 12 teams. Last team. 12th team. Mallorca. The only team, the only underdog team in this test that actually didn't do fantastic or massively overachieved. It's still good that they didn't get relegated. Uh, but they didn't do fantastic like all the other underdog teams did. Uh, but they did get Hernandez in first with 24 goals. So at least you got a solo performance uh, that turned out well. So let's have a look at the competitions there. Mallorca, Spanish Cup, fourth round. They went out, right? It's expected. Small team, you're not going to beat the likes of Atletico Madrid, Barcelona. It's possible, very unlikely, no matter how good your tactic is. All right, it's just a game of luck, as you would say. All right, tactics can be great. There'll be a big, big factor in how well you can do in a league. But it's also down to luck. It's also down to shots. Human interaction, human play of the game uh, can change a lot of things. Uh, so let's have a look then at your squad. Your best player was... Uh, Sung Young, 8 and 6, 37 apps, 16 chances created, one of your midfielders. Then you got Febas, 6 and 6, Hernandez, 26 goals and 3. Uh, and then apart from him, uh, Junior, 11 and 4, decent numbers, attacking left, you're attacking right, 5 and 10, so he did pretty well. Uh, it's a shame his average rating was a bit low, obviously, so his all round gameplay was bad. They were just in the right place at the right time, kind of player. Uh, tactic analysis then for Mallorca. Goals in the last 50 games, 103. So again, that's high. Considering where you finish, you actually finish low and you're a low standard team. 103 is actually pretty great. Uh, it just proves that maybe a lot of teams in that league played, played good. Or right? It was just one of those seasons where everyone plays, unfortunately, better than you. Uh, it happens. Obviously, it happens quite a lot. I've played plenty of saves where everyone just seems to have supermen in goal. And you just can't score or you can't win. Uh, and it's a shame. It, what what can you do? At the end of the day, you didn't get relegated, so you should be happy. Uh, total conceded, though, was high. 73. Um, would have been nice to get a bit lower. But where you finished in the league, what team you are, it's showing the right numbers. Um, goal types then, play shots 55, powerful shots 13, curled shots 2, 25 headers, again with the headers, free kicks 1 and penalties 7, goal assists uh, in the last 50, 26 came from set pieces, the rest of them were all from open play, there's the goal locations and there's the assist locations and guys, that is the last tactic test of FM20, it's been a journey, All right, we haven't been doing this long, it's been less than a year. But I think we've done pretty well. I'm hoping everyone is enjoying the content that we have given over this past, what, 10 months? I think it's 10 months since it was actually properly began. So thank you very much. It's all down to you guys. Hopefully you're going to subscribe. All the guys that don't and just watch the video, consider it. Subscribe because I'll be here for a while. Uh, FM 21, 22, 23, 29 and 30. Hopefully go as long as we can go. And uh, download the tactic. Let us know, guys. Comment. And hopefully you have a great save. And uh, hopefully everyone's looking forward to FM21. For those of you who aren't actually going to get FM21, my channel is still there with all of the FM20 content on it. It's not going anywhere. So obviously you can use that to your liking. And uh, I'll see you guys for FM21. Uh, for tactic testing, anyway. There is still a few more videos to come out. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. This is Tucker Jobs Gaming. See you later. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. And hopefully if you like the content and you like our channel, please consider subscribing, commenting, and liking on the videos that we do. We are fully appreciative of your support. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. And if you are still interested, there is a video below me that you should check out. Pretty good, pretty fun. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Bye.